Hey guys, we just got the shiny new MacBook Pro 16 inch into the office and we are excited to run some benchmarks and some tests with it. We normally use the Mac in our workflow for video production and working on the website, but we want to see if this MacBook Pro can run our high-end Valve Index VR headset. So the MacBook Pro 16 inch that we got has all of the different specs maxed out except for the storage. That means we got the Intel Core i9 8 core CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz base clock with a 5.0 gigahertz boost. For the RAM, we have 64 gigabytes of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM. For the GPU in this MacBook Pro, we have the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with the eight gigabytes of video RAM option. And for the storage, we have a two terabyte SSD. You can configure this up to eight terabytes. So that's the MacBook Pro configuration that we have. It's all maxed out on the things that matter for speed and responsiveness. Now, a lot of the other reviews for the MacBook Pro 16 inch have focused on the great new studio microphones or the added bass in the speakers, but we're taking a little bit different angle and we're going to look at how well this MacBook Pro performs when you give it one of the most demanding PC workloads, and that is running a VR headset with the resolution maxed out. And of course, if you're gonna record your VR session, you're gonna to have to run OBS in the background and record that at the highest resolution. So we're gonna see if we can use a MacBook Pro to run the high-end VR headset and record in 4K video all simultaneously. The valve index resolution is 1440 by 1600 per eye, and it runs at a default of a 120 hertz refresh rate with an experimental 144 hertz refresh rate. The MacBook Pro has a display that is only running at a 60 hertz refresh rate, but that doesn't mean we can't see if the graphics card inside can't be pushed to refresh at 120 or 144, which we will do. The field of view that you get with the Valve Index VR headset is 130 degrees, and so we'll try to capture all of that field of view while we're doing the recording of the VR gameplay. Let's see if the MacBook Pro 16 inch is up to the challenge. The first test that we ran was, of course, to see how well the MacBook Pro could support gameplay of Beat Saber at the highest difficulty settings. The reason that we like to do that is because there are a lot of bottlenecks that you need to remove when you are designing a computer that will run a VR headset. If you don't get all those bottlenecks out, you're going to see a lot of lagging in the game and the latency will cause you to miss some of the bricks in Beat Saber when you're playing the game. And as you continue to progress through the level, the game gets laggier and laggier. Having these experiences previously on various PC rigs, we wanted to see if that same thing would happen when we ran Beat Saber on the MacBook Pro with the Valve Index at max resolution. So what we did first was we went into the settings of Beat Saber and we turned on video mirroring to the maximum resolution supported by the display that was connected. We also turned on motion smoothing to the highest setting, and we also set the field of view to match the headset's field of view for the screen mirroring. So we're piping the entire video of our gameplay back into the MacBook to be recorded by OBS at the highest possible settings. The next thing we did was we went into the Steam settings and turned those all the way up. We tried out the 144 hertz setting and we also tried the 120 hertz setting for the display refresh rate. As a point of reference, we typically run the Valve Index headset at 90 frames when plugged into the PC rig that we have. We have the best performance at 90 hertz, and so that's where we have kept the settings. Finally, what we did in the settings for OBS was turn on maximum mirroring quality, and we cranked the bitrate recording all the way to the top so that we would have near lossless capture of gameplay. We did try lossless capture of gameplay, but that eats up about nine gigabytes of disk space per minute of gameplay. But we didn't want to eat up that much hard drive space, so what we did was we put the settings to near lossless, indistinguishable. These file sizes are still very massive, but 
they aren't as big as complete lossless. So that's the setup, and that's where we started. We started with Beat Saber. And once we got into gameplay, we could not believe what we saw. There is a very simple set of items that you'll need when you set up the Valve Index with the MacBook Pro, and that includes a USB-C to DisplayPort adapter. That's just one adapter. And you'll need a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Outside of that, there's nothing else required to connect your MacBook Pro to the Valve Index. from this playback this video capture is incredibly high quality it is buttery smooth and it is absolutely flawless when we were inside of the headset playing we couldn't believe what we were seeing and we couldn't believe what we were experiencing but now because the game is so much more responsive on this MacBook Pro we actually feel like we can accomplish some of the more complicated difficult Beat Saber levels Additionally, the computer was writing to disk and playing back the game and capturing motion and combining all of these together into a video that we could then replay afterward. This was all being done on this thin, portable MacBook Pro that is traditionally used for things that you would assume would be less demanding. We were blown away by this and so what we wanted to do next was try out the MacBook Pro with a Valve Index headset on a more complex VR title that says right in the game requirements that you need top of the line graphics to experience this game fully. And so we went to none other than Arizona Sunshine and we cranked the graphics to the max and we jumped right into that game seeing if we could get this MacBook Pro to stall out, tear frames, or just not look fantastic like we experienced inside of Beat Saber. So if you haven't gathered by now, we're really surprised. In fact, we're pleasantly surprised at how well this laptop is performing running a non-native operating system. We're running Windows through Boot Camp. And it's also running programs that arguably aren't for the Mac. But this MacBook Pro is outperforming the custom PC rig that we put together specifically for VR gameplay. We're going to keep trying different titles with the MacBook Pro in place of the PC rig and see if we can get this thing to stall up or tear some frames. But so far, we are incredibly impressed with how well the MacBook Pro performs. There's a lot of people that can get frustrated that Apple doesn't allow people to modify the system very much once they've purchased it. On the flip side, the bottlenecks that could be introduced that need to be designed away by an end user who wants to make a custom configuration become very overwhelming. The benefit of this MacBook Pro is that all the bottlenecks have been dealt with and eliminated by Apple and they gave you a finished product that is incredibly powerful. In fact, it's powerful enough to run some of the most demanding VR games. So there you have it. The MacBook Pro 16 inch with all maxed out configuration is running incredibly smoothly the pro level valve index at native resolution at 120 hertz and including 144 hertz we were able to successfully run it there all without a hiccup no frame tearing or frames drop this is one outstanding and powerful machine so let us know what you think in the comments do you have a macbook pro 16 inch are you interested in getting into vr but you don't have a pc and you don't really want to go buy another computer just for vr well, the VR inside of the MacBook Pro running boot camp, of course, is outstanding. Let us know in the comments what games you think we should play next to really push the limits of what this MacBook Pro is capable of. Thanks for watching. We'll keep this updated and we will see you in the next one.